What is up, Wizards fans? Welcome into another Believe in Wizards podcast. I'm Matt Moderno. He's Osman Beg. We don't really have anything big to talk about here today. We just wanted to get together and see how Oz was doing, how your morning's going. Oz, what, what's new? Anything happening in your world? No, nah, man. You know, like just hanging out, uh, having some coffee. You know, it's yeah. like, you know, I miss Matt. Let me just talk to him today. You know, exactly. Yeah. Uh, we'll see if we can figure out something to talk about uh, as we go along here. As always, we're brought to you by Stateside Vodka and their Surfside Hard Iced Teas. And we're brought to you by Bet Online. It's the fastest and easiest way to place wagers on all your you know, favorite casino and card games, which coaches may or may not get laid off first. I definitely wouldn't have had Adrian Griffin before Wes Unsell Jr., but it happened. So we're going to get into that. Bet Online is your fastest and easiest way to do everything betting related. And you can get a 50% off uh, welcome bonus for using our promo code BLEAV, B L E A V, on your first deposit. So go do that. And you can sign up on your mobile device or from your phone, whatever you want to do. Bet Online, it's where the game starts. All right, Oz, we buried the lead here. Just being a little silly because this is a happy day in Wizards' uh, end of my guess, realistically. Wes Unsell Jr. is out as the Wizards head coach. He will be moved into a front office role, which I think we've been talking about in the group chat for a very long time here. They were not going to do him dirty. I actually yeah. thought he'd make it through the year before, you know, they think there was a better way to better utilize his talents or some bullshit press release. But uh, they just fucking, I don't know, man, they pulled the plug here. And I'm, I'm a little yeah. surprised. Did this timing shock you as much as it did me? So look, truth be told, when you had texted this morning to me and uh, me and Kevin saying, "Hey, yeah. are you willing to do it? Do one?" I was like, "Are do you want to do a pot about should he the be game? fired?" Because <laughs> I was like, I was in getting the kids to school mode oh, and yeah. had not looked at my phone yet. You're not so a degenerate I, that just scrolls Twitter before they wake up in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so then I look at my phone. I see that Wes got fired. My yeah. kid is late to school as a result. It is what it is. So you know. I'll have to send a note to the school saying that he had to talk to <laughs> <Yeah>. or something. <laughs> I no, but I'm um, a good parent. Yeah. <laughs> but like, so yeah, it's it's surprising. It's surprising because it didn't seem like it was gonna happen. Yeah. It's not surprising because there was there was merit to doing this before the season even started. Yeah, I agree. He was going to go into the year as a lame duck coach, so we got the extension. And then there were a lot of people that were like, well, that means he's here for all of next year. And I, I think that's yeah. one thing, you know, we've been very adamant about on here that that didn't mean shit long term. It, I thought it meant he would get through the year. Um, but most of it just because, like, Ted's been kind of a cheap fuck for most of his time yeah. as an owner. And when you promote someone to an interim head coach, that usually comes with some kind of, like, salary compensation to match the additional job duties. So. Yeah, I just didn't think he would pay two head coaches for the same like losing season essentially. But hey, the man has opened the wallet in some way here, so I will give him some modicum of credit when it uh, is like kind of due, I guess. Yeah, it also, but it also kind of goes to what was the purpose of picking up that fourth year option? And I know the argument was you don't want a lame duck coach, but was he? He was still a lame duck. Whether or not, duck yeah, they did. Whether or not they picked up the fourth year option or not, it didn't impact how the players like seemed to react to him or anything because. His job status long term was still in doubt because Winger and Dawkins didn't hire him, you know. Right. So it ultimately was just basically like like a gift, and it made that's no sense. The, that's the pretend we have faith in you option. Yeah. Like it's we, we really don't. We want to see if you're shit or not, and what your deal really is, and why this team's underachieved under you, and and then we'll go from there. And I think that was just like a let's try to give him a solid enough to see if he can do the job, and yeah, it looks like he couldn't. Uh, shout out to fact they have an interim coach for the rest of the season, and they've already stated that. Versus, yeah. they've said we're not going to do our comprehensive coaching search to the off season. That could be part of the whole like financial thing. They're like, I'm not paying two coaches in the same year big money. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I hope that's just due diligence, and and maybe it is cheaper to just promote someone within a little bit, to, you know, than to go somebody totally new. Um, right. Shout out to my guy Neary. He posted a picture in our, in our other group chat last night about uh, Will Dawkins sitting a couple rows behind him uh during the game and i haven't seen will like visible at a lot of these games so i don't know where he typically sits but maybe he saw what a lot of us saw last night and to me that was cool bali just looking at like totally just out of it and then kind of glazed yeah. over and, and you and i felt the same way i think but it, it was just um it, it seemed more obvious in last night's game and it, I, like the one thing they said as long as we see growth from our young guys this year this year's a win. So as soon as you see that last night, it's like, uh oh, all right, this has got to be a red flag for them. Maybe that was the move that caused them to like finally pull the band aid here. Yeah, I, I think. Well, look, Shams Jarnia earlier this week basically came out and said the only untouchable on the roster was Bilal Kulabali. Right. Right. So, 
Uh, and then he may have had his worst game of his rookie season last yeah, night. Um, and and it's not just like you, you could have a bad game. Like he's had bad a couple bad shooting games where he took the right shots and shots just missed. Sure. Um, you and I were talking last night in a, big, in a bigger group. He looked overwhelmed. The speed was too fast for him. He couldn't read the floor offensively quick enough. He quick he more often than not like got stuck in situations where he couldn't get out. The mm -hmm. shot didn't look great. There was yeah. really like it his was tentative and herky jerky and yeah that kind of stuff. The the his jump shot, the rotation on the jump shot didn't look identical on any no. shot, shot to shot. Mm -hmm. It looked different every single shot, which for a shooter is not a good thing, you know. Yeah. So, um, and that's kind of why one of the reasons why I've been like uh, on. on you know, talking so much about like Johnny Davis doesn't matter. His jump shot doesn't matter. Only but, to the Davis family at this point, and that's realistic. Yeah, yet. I mean that's he doesn't matter. Sad, but true. Bilal yeah. does. So if we don't see Bilal's jump shot coming along, then it's like, oh shit, we gotta like something has to be done because we need to like look. He's the most important player to the future of this roster. They need to take care of him and do right. Like figure out a way to maximize his potential. And I don't think Wes was doing that. Yeah, I mean, I think that's really hard to make the argument that they were kind of giving him the most, uh, you know, job responsibilities he could take on. And and that's that's just all you wanted to see as a Wizards fan. Yeah. So at, at a certain point, I don't know, it, it seems like maybe the organization has turned a corner a little bit in terms of like gauging fan reaction or actually giving a shit about what people think. And, and the outcry or groundswell or whatever you want to call it was definitely getting a little louder, I think. Like, all right, the guy's trending in the wrong direction here. What are we doing? Uh, shout out to Brandon Scott over at uh, Locked on Wizards asking the question about like, are we showcasing young, you know, old guys at the expense of the young guys here, essentially? And Wes was just kind of like, oh, we're trying to win ball games and like all the stuff you kind of expect him to say. But yeah, like we don't run plays for you is is just not what anybody wants to hear right now. And yeah, I, you know, have just to run like, all of them. But and look, this is not just us saying this, Matt and I saying this because he's not like having 20 point games over his last 19 games. This is based stat statistically backed last 19 games. Block Lavalli is averaging 6.6 .6 points um, per game um, in 25 minutes per game, shooting 38% from the field, 31% from uh, three point line and 67% from the free throw line. That's not, that's not look growth. Isn't always linear, sure. but that's not what you want to see out of the only untouchable player on your roster. And it's very realistic. The guys like hit the wall to some extent already. Yeah. He, like he he got eased into last season, his first real full season in like high level professional basketball. So he mm -hmm. didn't play like a sort of like deep set of minutes. I'm sure they did a ton of skill development with him all summer. So the guy probably hasn't had a rest. Like I could see that being a very relevant thing, but yeah. I'd rather see him struggle because they gave him too much to do, not struggle because they didn't give him anything to do. And he didn't know how to play basketball. Just shoved yeah. in the corner. Yeah, and exactly. And then the times where yesterday there were a couple situations in particular where he finally got the ball in the corner, but there wasn't much time on the shot clock and a yeah. defender actually closed out. Yeah. And he had no idea how to counter that. Yeah. No. Not not like not with little time on the clock. And when he was wide yeah. open, you you just saw this move a couple times. Yeah. It's like I'm yeah. frozen. What do I do? And actually, even the last few games, there have been a couple instances where I'm like, he where he gets it in the corner, he, the, a closeout comes his way, and it's like, ooh, perfect opportunity to attack a closeout, much yeah. like what Corey's doing these mm -hmm. days. And Bilal's not attacking it. So it's like, can he do it or is he just not doing it? Or has he been kind of like, look, once you're, you know, it's the whole kind of, you know, like once you're trained to do one thing, mm. it's just not in your thought process. So, yeah. you know, there's, there's just a lot there. So like all this, you know, kind of going back to Bilal, tying Bilal and Wesson over here. But let, I got one thing oh, for you sorry, real quick yeah. before you, no, no, this is, yeah. I think this is just a good segue though, because they have announced that Brian Keefe is going to be the interim head coach. And this is a guy that has a lot of background doing player development for people, right? Like we heard the mm -hmm. KD quotes about, hey, while I was in Brooklyn, Keith was the guy that helped me add to my game and and work on my footwork and add different moves and counters. And you kind of have to wonder if like that's maybe why this guy gets that specific move. And I don't know how his player development resume compares with David Vanderpool's, but yeah. uh, is the lead assistant. So he's probably the natural choice anyway. He's been considered for head coaching jobs in the past. So it probably makes sense anyway, but to me, I think this is probably a good sign for the do more with Koulibaly crowd because this seems like a guy that actually prioritizes like, okay, let's do stuff to get you better that you can put to use in games. And and hopefully yeah. we see more from Koulibaly because of that. Yeah, that's definitely the hope. Um, 
Absolutely the hope that you you see that. I was a little, again, like you and I were talking quickly before we hopped on, I was a little surprised it wasn't Vanderpool, but this does make a lot of sense. And look, I'm not saying like tonight, don't put Bilal in for 30 minutes and give him the ball the entire game, sure. but let's get a plan. And maybe that's what it is. And see, this is where kind of the whole, I've been kind of like trying to unravel this or kind of piece this together for the past, like the past hour or two. Mm-hmm. Um, when West does bad, the reporting this summer was that they wanted to be bad, but they didn't want to bottom out, right? Mm-hmm. That's at least the reporting. If you if you buy that, you buy that. If you don't, you don't. Yeah. But that was a reporting, I think it was done by Josh Robbins with The Athletic, that this tank might not be like an immediate tank. It might be like a harder tank later. Mm-hmm. And Kuzma, Jones, Pool, kind of, kind of all here makes the right, like competes the whole way through. And we haven't seen that recently. Yeah. Um, yeah. That element of the team has gone. Yeah, basically at all. Like I yeah. think – Look, the Pistons are only two games behind us. Mm-hmm. And I would argue that the Pistons are playing hard every single night. They're in pretty much every single game, and the way they're playing is pretty admirable as of late. Even you know? just look at the new guy from the Pistons. Like, Bagley isn't scoring yeah. because he's, like, got Hakeem Olajuwon post moves. It's, like, yeah. put backs and hustle baskets and beating guys yeah. down the floor. And yeah, he's, he's not sort of ingrained into, like, what, the way the Wizards play yet. So I can't wait for him to start loafing his ass around like half these other guys. But... <laughs> He's, he came in and he is like busted his ass so far. And, and that's a hungry guy that wants to show people it can play. And, and maybe exactly. That's and more. that's what, that's what this team is missing. So when everyone's like, you know, so when, when the complaints come out about West, it's like, Oh, well they want to tank. It's like, well, clearly that wasn't their plan. And this action shows that letting Wes be the tank commander is not actually what they wanted. Right. So I think that notion that they just allowed Wes or to kind of coach and that they want this roster to be this bad Mm-hmm. You got to punt on that because that's not big, like that's not factual. Like based on the reporting, based on their actions, you could conclude that they don't want to be this bad and right. they want to see better development from in particular Bilal Kulabali. I think that's fair to conclude to, right? Uh, yeah, I think that seems like a reasonable way to take this. Like they, they wanted their Brett Brown, right? Like the guy that's going to yeah. help the young guys and we're going to be so bad we couldn't even win because we have like a college all-star roster but yeah. guys will play hard and they'll work on yeah. some stuff and then we'll fire him as soon as we like get good enough for it to matter. And uh, that just, that just didn't seem like that was the case. And honestly, they probably figured it wasn't fair to Wes at some point. Like th- this guy is going to get so buried record wise with this tank. Mm-hmm. He'll never pull his way out of it. And, and this will impact him for future jobs at a certain point. Like the season is yeah. just so unsalvageable. Like maybe let's just cut bait for everybody. And maybe that's why if you're Wes, you agree to take this move into the front office as opposed to just, letting them like let you go outright because no one was going to go pick him up, you know, mid season to be an assistant right. or whatever anyway. And, and in Wes's mind, if he's amenable to this, does he want to be this franchise's version of Paul Silas just kind of here throughout the, like the, the bottom, you know, because then yeah. he's not going to, like you said, once he comes out of it, he's not going to ever get another look, you know? Yeah. It, that's, that's the tough way to do it. And uh, yeah, I don't know. He's 736 this year, 77 and 130 in two and a half seasons. That's actually worse when I see it written out than I actually felt like it would be just because in the last couple of years, like, all right, they were bad, like relative to expectations, but they weren't so bad. It's like, no, actually they were just bad. Like, and and this year they're really bad. bad. Uh, (laughs) That's, that's tough to do. Uh, shout out to my guy, Daniel Slowinski. Uh, Dan came in from London to see the Wizards last night, and he single-handedly is responsible for Wes getting fired. So shout out, Dan. It's very cool. Uh, you come all the way here to see Wes's last game as a Wizards head coach. So, so that's pretty special. Uh, this this player, well, I was going to say, I was going to say player personnel related move, but I actually don't know what the title uh, is at this point. Uh, so Wes is going to move into the front office in some context. To me, this is like the John Thompson, the third move. Like we have yeah. to have somebody with ties to this general area and organization in this either community community engagement or um, player relations role or whatever that actual title was. And, and Thompson has since been promoted along with this front office. Like he kind of moved up the chain into like a parallel branch from the front office, but he's like the fourth leg of the stool essentially. And yeah, and you see him in the background of these press conferences and stuff. So. I don't know if they needed somebody to fill like whatever that kind of role was community outreach player stuff, things guy that just does stuff figurehead wise. I, you know, I, I don't know, but um, Jihadi talked about it a lot on this pod that he knows firsthand that Wes is a smart X's and O's guy. And his quote that I thought was really good and, and seems prescient at the moment is 
Um, he's saying the right things. They're yeah. just not listening to it come out of his mouth. It may need to come out of someone else's mouth. Right. And that's why he could be such a good assistant. And just some guys just do not have the temperament to reach and lead other people. They can come up with all the great schemes and strategies, whatever. It's just, can you get buy-in and can you hold them accountable? And and that seems like what was missing from, from this last And, and I think you pointed out maybe two years ago that maybe he is the assistant, yeah. not, not the head coach, because he clearly knows the game, but and look, this I'm not I'm not in the locker room. I'm not uh, I'm not like on the sidelines, so I don't know from afar from my fan perspective. And this is clearly a fan perspective. This is no no like I'm I'm watching them. I see I see Chris Finch, and he has mm-hmm. a number two seat in the West Conference Western Conference, and he rips into them after they lose to the who it was the Hornets, right? Yeah, something like that. I think it was the Hornets. Yeah, when they lost to the Hornets. Um, because because of kind of when when Cat was going for like seventy and they kind mm-hmm. of blew the lead and all that and he has the second seed in the in the Western Conference. Yeah. Meanwhile, on nights when we give up one hundred and forty points, West comes out there and he's like, "Yeah, we competed for stretches." He yeah. just doesn't have that temperament to kind of lay into a guy. And maybe that's not yeah. what they need, but like th- there's a difference. There. There's a subtle difference there. And then and just also just from my perspective, when I'm watching, when a when the guy just keeps talking about synergy and all this, it is so uninspiring. Yeah. You know, and it's asleep, like sleep listening to the press conference. Yeah, going to sleep listening to the pe- press conference. The title belt to me was lame. <laughs> yeah. like, what that's another question here. What happens do, to the title belt? Who gets it? Yeah, who where, has the where last does it one? Go? Yeah. Like, do they put do they do they put in the case now? Does it go with Wes? Because it, it only stay there. It came out after wins, right? So we haven't seen it in a, in a couple we weeks. Here. It <laughs> yeah, he should just give it to Gafford and just be like this. Yeah, hey, hey Daniel, you're like hey, you. Just, Wes should just carry it around the office. That should just be his uniform <laughs> at these, uh, you know, if he's doing like player symposiums or whatever, he's responsible yeah. for putting together. He's just walk around with the belt. But, but like, see all that comes off to me as like, Hey, you know, I saw this online. This could be a good, yeah. good way to motivate. It's corny but it's and like, you're trying too hard like that. Right. It's just like, you know, it wasn't off. It didn't seem authentic. Nothing really seemed authentic and nothing seemed like it got these guys to kind of pull in the same direction, you know? Mm-hmm. And yeah, just like, and like kind of using the Pistons as an example. I mean, it's just, so the last 15 games, their differential is set my, negative 70.7.2 points a game. The Wizards are still negative 9.5 points per game. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's one of those things. Like if you, the Pistons lost 27 in a row. Yeah, pretty close. But to that. they're like showing that they're competing and fighting, trying yeah. to pull it in the same direction. The Wizards are kind of just staying in that same spot that they've been all season long. And, and if anything, a couple of players like Denny's playing pretty well, mm-hmm. Bagley's playing pretty well, but Kuzma has been playing well for about a month now. Um, Bilal has not been playing for well for a month now. Jordan Poole hasn't been playing well the entire season. And you didn't these like are what guys he brought that, to the table last night. You, you weren't yeah. a fan of that performance. <laughs> and these are guys that, like you know, long term or not, they're important yeah. either in terms of their long term position with the organism with this team, or in terms of what they'll bring back to this team in an eventual trade. And they can't all be like sinking at the same time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I think that's got to be it. You have to maximize what every one of these guys does, whether for it's your future or for their future or for yeah. the trade asset or chest's future. Like, it just, yeah. that that's bad timing. Although last night was – so it's interesting. Like, I thought that was, like, one of their better, like, overall performances last night. Like, they hung with a good team. They couldn't guard Anthony Edwards at all, and the talent disparity yeah. was, like, very apparent. They couldn't guard Cat at all. The talent disparity was really apparent, but – uh, I, I thought like the effort overall was pretty good. They they competed, um, but it's go ahead. Sorry, well, but the backcourt was just such shit. Like it just yeah. Tyus had a bad night. Jordan Poole had a bad night, and and like Kuzma was weirdly deferential. You just you have no chance of actually winning one of those kind of games when yeah. when guys <laughs> are like that. So I don't know if, if Tyus maybe knows he's out the door and he's just like f this. I'm I'm gonna coast until I get traded or. I don't know. Maybe he didn't want to get traded back like, to Minnesota. I don't know. It's also like they stay within that 10 points of these, like, you know, they, they lost to Denver yeah. by 10 ultimately, right. but it's like, it's never in doubt. The result is never in doubt. Like when exactly. they play these better teams and it's almost like the game was close at halftime. I think the Wizards mm. were up by two and then Cat decided I'm going to get downhill in the third quarter. They yep. get the, the lead jump to, 
12 ish to mm-hmm. well, 12 to 14. And then from there, they kind of just coasted. It's like they play as hard opponents, good opponents play as hard as they need to play against the Wizards. Yeah, I think true. that's the way I would view it. But Why you break are out right. the extra gear unless you yes. actually need to do it. Yeah, yeah but true. you are right. Kuzma, um, oddly, was passing up a ton of shots. Yep. Uh, did not look very engaged as a scorer. He was very active on the boards and as a passer. Yep. Um, but in terms of like turnovers and in terms of shooting, it was it was an odd game. Well, the turnovers, he kind of has those games once in a while. The shooting sure. was, he passed up a lot of shots that he normally takes. Yep. Um, Jordan Poole just kind of was just going through the motions all the way out the way out there the whole time. I, I can't do it, man. I don't want to turn this into another Matt says he doesn't like to watch Jordan Poole segment, but Matt doesn't like to watch Jordan Poole. And <laughs> anyone who watched him segment, last yeah. yesterday and said that he actually, you know, I mean, all you have to do is watch yesterday. And and Matt and I are in a, in a chat, and I think the conversation in the chat afterwards was like the Timberwolves were bigger, uh, more athletic, more yeah. skilled, stronger than pretty Everything much anyone in basketball. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's like we were watching, like just yeah, just it was watching like a varsity, the var- like the varsity yeah. at, at like like you know varsity players play against the JV players. And you no, know, the score the fre- was maybe game. maybe the freshman team. If we're being honest, yeah, maybe the freshman team in terms of like what you saw physically, like like Poole would drive, and then Gobert would uh, Rudy Gobert would just like swat it off the backboard. I saw at least five blocks off the backboard yesterday. I did especially like though when Bagley was driving right side on a fast break with Gobert chasing him, and he chose to go up left hand right side <laughs> directly in front of Gobert. And, Maybe he was, you know, baiting him to, to draw the foul, which he ultimately did. But I was like, Jesus, this is not going to end well. I what thought he was going need... to get spiked off the backboard. <laughs> it was like he easily had a right hand layup, right hand yeah. dunk. He insisted on going up left. We might just have Bizarro Denny, you know? Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> we can only go left on the right side. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, one thing, um, actually, though, totally unrelated to Wes. I'll save it for a little later, though about that okay yeah a couple a couple more things on the west one yeah i I was a little surprised by the timing i I guess i don't know we talked about it bilal looking like he got bullied on the playground last night is probably bad for your long-term job security security but do do you think it was anything like this reluctance to change the starting lineup because i've seen a couple of those tweets and and i want to address like uh, other people's seemingly thoughts or comments on it that, that just his stubbornness about like this is the group that will win us games do you think that played into it at all for the front office see i don't know i it's weird for a seven and 36 team to not make any starting lineup changes mm-hmm. ever like unless someone's just not available that's yeah. odd but this is all kind of like how keeping Wes never really made sense from the beginning yeah and it's kind of like you know tommy shepherd took the job and he inherited Scott Brooks, and Scott Brooks eventually left. And then now, um, and then Tom Shepard left. But now you had Winger and Dawkins come, and they inherited West Hansel Jr., and it just made perfect sense to move on from him, but they kept him. And remember when Ernie Grunfeld was let go, it was that surprise Woj tweet. I mm. can't even remember when. It, like, it was, a, it was a few weeks after the season ended. Yeah. And I remember I, I, where it was, and it was it specifically made reference to Wes Unsell being here. Mm-hmm. Remember, like it actually pointed out that Wes will remain. So it yeah. kind of was almost like he won a little bit of a power yeah. struggle. Right? He's going to bridge the gap, you know, yeah. like kind of like. But it never made sense. If you're going to bring in two guys, Winger and Dawkins and, and the other guys that they brought it with them to kind of lead this new era, you got to just everyone start at start fresh and there was no fresh start there. So kind of going back to your original question with the so lineup. I, I think we said Ernie when Ernie Grunfeld got fired, by the way, we went Ernie 2.0 just for clarification. Oh yeah. yeah. Sorry. 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 Not Ernie. Yeah. I meant Tommy and the Tommy. He, and, yeah. It's, it's basically <laughs> the same thing though. So you, basically the same thing. Yeah. Um, but going back to the lineup thing, this front office, this front office seems to have prioritized asset building in pre pre deadline. So, yes, it's odd that there's no lineup change, but who could you actually take out of the lineup? Mm-hmm. Your Tyus, Tyus' contract expires. Jordan yeah. Poole was brought in. They kept referring him as a pre-prime player. And maybe you could send make a statement and bring Poole off the bench once in a while for not playing. You could launch him into the sun for all I care <laughs> at this point. Uh, so that's how over this I am. I'm sorry. Denny is playing well. He should be in the lineup. Kuz should obviously be in the lineup. And then Gafford, they didn't even have a center, another center. So 
where would that lineup change have been? And probably three or four of those guys are being talked about potentially in trade talk, right. you know? So it's, but it's also like where there's no alignment there. Like you need the coach, a new coach should have come in with them. Mm-hmm. This should have been the vision. And then it, it is what it is at that point, you know? You need him to be like the real fourth leg of this managerial stool. Like he has to be, yeah. they they all make this super fist together or infinity yes. gauntlet of, of front office types. And, and um, it never makes no sense said in the chat. He's got a Woj tweet here that says, it's expected the Wizards will be seeking a coach with an extensive player development track record when they conduct a wider offseason search. So they're going to push out all the old guys and bring in a bunch of young dudes and see if somebody can actually move them in the right direction. And this also and means keep, keep his, keep his coaching potentially for the job long. term. He's a candidate. I, I, I was just literally going to ask you that next. If you think there's yeah. a world where if, if they show pro, like positive growth or they play hard the rest of the way, could we see um, him, him be the guy essentially? 100%, especially given that they're going to focus so much on player development and his background in player development. Mm. That being said, this is also the Wizards. And look, you hate that, like, you always want to give the new front office the benefit of the doubt. But, sure. okay, so the Redskins slash Commanders, whatever, you know, like, that organization became known as the reverse car wash, you know? Yeah. yeah. And this is, like, you know, and it's because things come in, they, everything sounds great when they first, and then it always ends up being the same old thing. Mm-hmm. I, it would not shock me if, if, if Keith, um, let me turn the Alexa off real quick. Can you yes. hear that? <laughs> yes. Uh, we Hold on one second. I'll be back. Here he says, "Fire Wes Unsell Jr." Uh, that's perfect timing right now. Um, yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I don't know enough about Keith. I've read the same things that everybody else wants to read. It's along the lines of, um, you know, he's got this extensive background with Dawkins and Winger from OKC. He like knows them long-standing so that that made sense to kind of be the one to promote him um you know obviously jihadi's talked about uh liking david vanterpool and playing with him and knowing him and what he could bring to the table and that we both personally would have liked that just kind of from a vibes former player perspective i need to look a little more into keith and see you know what he is what his background is I, i think this particular group of guys that would benefit from somebody that's like if you're going to keep these guys, they seem to need a little more kick in the ass than they've been getting. Now, if you want to pivot to younger guys longer term, and you know, it's a bunch of Belials that are these young, impressionable guys that are like nodding, like you know, like excited children every time you teach them something new. Like then, then maybe that's okay. And I don't know enough about Keith's temperament. Uh, Jihadi hadn't really dealt with him at all either. So I'm going to see if I can get somebody that that knows Keith personally to come on and talk about a little bit more, like what his temperament is like, and yeah, and we see you know how that maybe fits long term. So kind of, sorry, sorry, before Alexa, Alexa went crazy, kind of just talking on her own. Um, you could see a scenario where this becomes Randy Whitman 2.0. Yeah. Ray, um, late Flips Honors got uh, let go mid-season. Mm-hmm. Randy took over the job. They showed some development. They, I think they ended the season on a decent stretch, and then yeah. he took the job permanently. Um, and it looked worked to varying degrees. You know, it wasn't terrible, but it was I always kind of known as the interim who just kind of never left, you know? Exactly. Um, that said, Keith has this track record, like track record of player development could be there, but like you said, it's, it's about getting everything aligned. Um, Mm -hmm. are some of the vets on the roster going to be all in on a younger developmental type coach or is it finally time to fully kind of like take this all apart? You know, that's, that's where we're kind of all right now. now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, uh, just based on the moves they made in the off season, I think a lot of us said when they, they made this coaching staff assemblage that his replacement was probably on this roster. Again, I, yeah. I didn't think it would be at this point in the year, but Keith is a guy that other teams wanted potentially to hire as an NBA head coach. Vanderpool was interviewed for head coaching jobs. I think yeah. they wanted him for that Minnesota job before they brought in Chris Finch, which has seemingly worked out pretty well for them. So these are guys that have the credentials oh, to actually yeah, really be considered or, or get this kind of job. And I think there'll be like a longer list. I hope they make, you know, like kind of a deep coaching search here, like the exhaustive one. I want them to call yeah. Obama again. Like I want to see who Barry would suggest <laughs> they bring in, but I want them to actually listen to it before we just hire the incumbent right out of the yeah, gate. I don't want the predetermined one. Like, you know, like exactly. all along during the GM search, everyone thought it could be Tommy. 
Yeah. Um, and the Caps did a similar thing, hiring their assistant, you know, and it became Tommy. And then once West got the interview, everyone kind of had their money on West getting the job because of the ties to the organization. So look, if Keith ultimately shows it and like earns it, that's cool. That would be great, you know, but don't, don't decide that this early, you know, let it all actually play out. Let the process play out, go in with an open mind. I 100% know who the next head coach of the Wizards would have been if Tommy Shepard were still the general manager of this team. I'm going to say that for tomorrow's pod because it's not, I wouldn't totally rule it out as a candidate and Jihadi and I are going to get into okay. some of these potential replacements, but that's your tease, everybody. It's going to piss people <laughs> off, but you're going to go, shit, that makes so much sense. I, I feel really strongly about this. So, so stay tuned. Um, just a couple quotes from the press release here that I thought were interesting. Michael Winger said, after several thoughtful conversations with Wes, we determined together that a change uh, was needed for the benefit of the team. Wes embodies the characteristics we value in our organization, and his vast, vast basketball experience will be an asset to the front office as we progress toward our long-term goals. We are thankful that he will continue his contributions to our organization and our community. I actually think they mean that, too. Everything you hear about Wes is what a good duty is. He's a smart mm -hmm. basketball mind. It's just, it's it's that doesn't have the ability to connect with these guys kind of thing. So maybe he has some like good insight he can provide them with. And maybe this actually strengthens the organization too. So I hope it yeah. works out for everybody involved. Wes said, I'm grateful to have served as the head coach of the wizards. I look forward to this new opportunity to work toward our organization's continued progress. I don't think this is going to be one of those things where they move you to some front office role and nobody ever sees you ever again. And it's like a figurehead job because we have to pay you. So we just try to save face. Like, I think they will actually try to put him to work to help the team and the organization and all this kind of stuff. So yeah, um, at least temporarily. Yeah. yeah that, at but, least uh, yeah. the end of the season, then I could see like at that point, a mutual quiet parting of the ways when everything's quiet in the off season where they West looks for an opportunity to be a lead assistant somewhere else. I can't wait till we're having the same conversation again in 2040 and Wes is still in the exact same position because that's, <laughs> that's the, another the staple of this organization is just keeping people with familiar names for literally forever. Yeah. It's, it is so, and the whole thing is, and I'm like, you know, I'm still, I think they made the right move and I don't think Wes has done a good job since he's been here because I mean, really in the two and a half years, there's no identity to this. There's never been an identity to this team. They're not really good. They're not good on offense. They're not good on defense. The last years they played with no pace this season, all of a sudden they tried to play with a ton of pace and the results were just a mess. It's kind of and that's like, largely because like, the players shamed you into it at the last year's right. exit interviews. Monte and Corey specifically got up there and were like, we told him we needed to run all year and they were too slow yeah. to listen to us. So that was already a bad sign that the inmates were running the asylum to some extent. And this is also kind of where to a message to like with Twitter, when everyone's like pace, 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 yeah. pace isn't always good. If you're not talented pace yeah. and just running up and down the floor, exchanging buckets is bad basketball. That's, reminiscent of the 2019 kind of season where where they weren't trying to win it wasn't really a tank but right. it was kind of a tank and they became so bad defensively that a lot of those habits were hard to break mm -hmm. and i think that's what we started to see this year and part of maybe part of the analysis from where you're in dawkins in terms of like what they saw but it's also so i don't you know i don't think he was the right guy for the job and it's good that he's no longer in the position but like a reality check with this roster, this roster is not very good, like we talked about. And I think that also, there's no fixing this roster, making it like there's, you know, there's minimal size. They're not going to go on a big winning streak. They're not going to, you know, this is not a good team. And I think that needs to also be acknowledged. Yeah. So I think the front office, whatever their plan is with Keith, they need to get on the same page. Like, are we developing? Are we showcasing? What are we doing? It just needs to all make a little more sense, you know? And I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt that this first yeah. year was just like, all right, let's just figure out what we've even right. got here, where we need to go with it. Like, is anyone here salvageable? Like, let's see them firsthand. Is Wes salvageable? That's why I like keeping him. Did, it never bothered me too much. Like, I wouldn't have yeah. done it, but I wasn't like going to like, you know, grab my pitchfork and head down to Capital One and like you right. know, mob outside the place. But I, I'm 100% with you. Like, now yeah. we've seen this. They figure out what assets they have. The path forward needs to be like, totally mapped out and you bring in the guy that can help you through this next three, four year stage of, of whatever that process is that, that you've mapped. And this is the thing I mentioned during the, you know, the podcast about what they're going to do, like for moving the team. Mm -hmm. If you're going to have a new arena in 2028, 
you're going to want to be good to sell those corporate boxes by 2026. Yeah. So there is now a clock on this rebuild. So I'm not saying you need to win a championship by 2026, but like you have to at least be on the way back up. You, you know, need to be like selling last, hope. last year's yeah. OKC team or something, not with that many yeah. picks or future superstars, but essentially, you know, like there's enough signs of life there. And exactly what you said, you're selling hope to people and this team certainly wouldn't do it. So you've no. got basically two off seasons now to make that happen. And that's going to be really interesting because now this coach probably, you know, you want to keep a guy more than three years essentially. So it's got to be someone that you think can develop them in the short term, but also pivot mm -hmm. into being the long-term guy too. And, right. and that's kind of interesting because these things don't always go quickly. And, not everyone has that same skill set to deal with different level of players. So um, that'll, yeah. that'll be interesting for me to see, I think, moving forward. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree. Like there is the stadium does put like a timeline, like you said, on this thing. And at what point is there? And look, we're still not even at the full teardown. So mm -hmm. they have to start moving things along out yeah. by this summer. Yep. And that's also kind of, you know, when you're when you're going through this whole process, that's kind of when you have to get on. The same page like with the vets on this team do you want mm -hmm. to be here for this do you want to be here for the real tear down the development should we start looking for a new new destinations for you guys like sure have honest interaction get everyone aligned on the same page because what we've seen and i think what's been so i don't mind that they're you know to me like uh, i've been asking for a tear down for a while mm -hmm. and the record doesn't bother me in the least sure. what has been tough to watch this season is being old and bad being old and bad right like the yeah. you know they're not a young bad team right. they're an old not old but they're not they're just like league average age yeah. so like you're not seeing any any signs of the future you're not seeing anything that you could point to and say hey long term this is what we're building towards mm -hmm. and that's been a tough that's been tougher because they haven't gotten to that teardown point so they have to just i think they have to move it along and get to that and have the coach in the front office align in doing so uh, also in the chat, uh, by the way, the chat's popping right now. I appreciate you all. And shout out to my guy, Joe Swam, for always asking people to hit that like button for us. That really does actually help promote this show to other Wizards fans and keeps growing this thing. So so thanks for doing that. Uh, but it never makes no sense as Wes Unsell Jr. out as head coach of the Washington Wizards. The firing was going to take place over the summer, regardless of really how the season was going to go, according to Shams. So that's interesting. Um, so, yeah, I think that's kind of what most people really thought here to be honest so um well, let's hit so a then you would have to assume then it goes back to so so i guess that's the question if it was always going to take o take place over the summer why did they do it with roughly 40 games left yeah it, it must I have just gotten so bad that it was actually a detriment at this point like they were going to yeah. try their best to just like ride it out if they could and and see if he could do something but now it's like all right shit our rookie is, is literally just like totally relegated to nothingness at this point. We, we've got to pull the plug here. That, that yeah. has to be it. Uh, let's see. Um, <laughs> same same comment uh, from, uh, I think this is Justin. Guys, I'm sorry. I never know who, what which person is attached to which YouTube <laughs> screen name, which corresponds to which Twitter screen name and, and all this kind of stuff. So apologies if I'm screwing that up. Uh, but he says, my favorite memory of Wes is when he got moved to a front office role. I think that's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> My second favorite memory is the first 10 games where Montrez Harrell looked like an MVP. Also good. Those were um, good times. Yeah. I, I kind of forgot that that was a thing. Was that um, his first, that was his first season, right? Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah. 757 seven, Finest says, Wes was the worst coach in Wizards history. I don't even think that's a hot take. He was awful. <laughs> it's a really interesting one. And because I'm a sick human, that might be like an off season deep dive for me as a podcast. I'll just, yeah. Who's the Mount Rushmore of shit Wizards coaches? And he's got to be on there. <laughs> I mean, I think he has, what, the two worst losses in franchise history. He gave up 160 points in a game as a defensive head coach. Like, it, it was bad. And and that Clippers bad. game will stick with me for the entire rest of my life. So yeah. there's that. No, yeah, I think you're right. Uh, Caleb Halberg yeah, says better. getting Wes out was definitely the right move, but I'm glad they did him right by not tackling fire him. I actually am I'm totally with you on that one. Yeah. Um, DMV for life says the Denny Bertans fight players fighting in the locker room, Kuz and pool arguing on the court, Delon and pool arguing on the court over 30, 20 point blown leads, 35 point comebacks from the Clippers Kuz and Poole argue on the court. court or they just basically not acknowledge each other on the court. I, I think it's more of a, a cold war <laughs> situation here, but, 
Uh, yeah, I mean, it, he makes some good points, though, right? Like, I, yeah. I've told this story before. I was at the Clippers game in L.A., uh, Wizards Clippers game in L.A., and Denny was, like, punking Wes in front of it and in front of everyone, and Wes just kind of took it. And I don't blame a player for being heated in the moment, but if I were yeah. the coach, I would also say, shut the fuck up or go to the locker room. And he just kind of, like, do 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 like he just let it happen and and just went about with like his blank slate and I feel like that's when you lose other guys when you just like take that shit. So yeah, and I think I think you also lose guys when things don't always make sense. Mm-hmm. So there've been games where, like Denny in his case, De- Denny in, for example has yeah. had a good first three quarters, and then inexplicably he's not on the floor, right. yeah. uh, and it doesn't really make sense. You know, like so there's there's been cases where that happens or like. Jordan Poole has had a few games where he actually has like shot well. It has mm-hmm. it has happened this year, people. Sure. On on the off occasion, but it has happened. Mm-hmm. And on those games, then he sits for like six or seven, like you know, he sits for like almost a full quarter after yeah, he's make, made three shots. It's like it's like, hey, you finally got good Jordan Poole for your one out of twenty games. Why mm-hmm. don't you just milk it to this one night? You know, mm-hmm. don't like ice him yourself. So like those type of things. Also, you can imagine just wear on the players. Yeah. And at some point, the players are going to tune out when things things just like – and that's why it's not always about like the result. Like win-loss, who cares? That None of that matters. The process, like kind of sensibility, like those things matter. Things have to be logical because otherwise then players are confused. And there just seemed to be a lot of confusion this first half of the season. <laughs> a friend of mine, the coaches, says that this generation, the younger guys more than ever, just need to know the why. They yeah. won't just listen to what you tell them, but if you can tell them why you're doing something, they'll get it and they'll go along with it. If it makes like reasonable sense, yeah. um, why can't be because of like, I don't know, um, global warming or something, but it's, it's like, Hey, Denny, you didn't do X, Y, or Z or Hey, Jordan, you didn't do X, Y, or Z. Okay. That gives them something productive to work on. And and when you can't explain it, what do they go take away from that? What's the learning right. opportunity that comes from that? So even yesterday, like Bagley had 17 points, 14 rebounds, and they're kind of making a mini run in the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. And then Wes pulls him. Yeah. And Bagley was, you know, him and Denny were one of their two best players yesterday. If Gafford like didn't was, foul out, it would have been him the whole rest. It of the would game. have been Gafford finishing the game. If Yeah, like you're right. If Gafford didn't foul out, Gafford was going to finish the game. Bullshit foul call, by the way. Got host there. I could like, not see anything on that replay. But the- <laughs> So like those things, those illogical things, it's hard to explain the why, and then players tune out, and mm-hmm. then you have what you saw in LA, like you said. You know, uh, Alex Kovach said Denny hat was a sweet parting gift, though. I agree, Denny killed it. Hats are cool. Um, I I now kind of wish I had not promised to give mine away because I think it's a pretty cool keepsake of remembering the day that Wes got fired. But that's okay. Uh, the truth said Wes was brought here as a defensive minded coach, and the defense got worse with him than it was with Scott Brooks. That also I think is that's is valid. The players got worse too, to be fair. But yeah, uh, yeah, he he. I think if you're that good a defensive minded coach that no matter how bad the personnel is, they're still NBA players. You should be able to scheme away into not being a bottom five defense. That's just my opinion. And maybe stupid, um, but I'm okay being stupid sometimes. Uh, <laughs> Bolts nation said great day to be a wizards fans. Hopefully Bill all and Bagley start. That would be interesting to see just some changes to the starting lineup, whatever that looks like. Uh, T bass says finally Wes is gone. Now they need to hire a coach that can manage men like a man. I, I mean, honestly, I, I think that is hitting like some of the mark here. There are a lot of good comments in the chat or uh, along yeah. those lines of just, you know, Hey, like this, this is a guy that just wasn't reaching the players and I'm not going to read them all yeah. to you. You guys can scroll through the YouTube chat here as you go. But, I, I think that kind of back to you that lineup comment. Yeah. Do you really want to take, let's just say, the plan eventually is to get back in the starting lineup. Do you really want to take Gafford out of the starting lineup ahead of the trade deadline when he is one of the team players that teams are reaching out for reportedly? I, I wouldn't be in a rush to do it um, unless yeah. you're communicating to them that, hey, we just we are willing to trade him and we just don't want to play him heavy minutes and let him get hurt. I don't know. But is, yeah. is any team going to see something from back, like Gafford over the next 10 games that they haven't already seen at this point? Yeah, yet? but it's just one of those one of those things like you've, You've already taken it this far with that plan. You just right. kind of got to ride it out these last. It's yeah, the trade deadline is exactly two weeks from today. Just ride right. it out, make your changes when you've committed to who's here, and then just roll uh, you roll those last thirty games. Yeah, exactly. Um, so th- this is really just I don't know. I, I think just scrolling through this year, I, I think it's obviously like a small sample size of, of Wizards fans overall. But I, I think this is one of those moves where like everybody is on board with, and that almost yeah. never happens in our fan base. Like you yeah. could be like, 
hmm, you know what? We're going to trade Anthony Davis and LeBron James to the Wizards for Anthony Gill. And you'd find some section of Wizards fans be like, I don't know. We can't lose that veteran leadership of Anthony Gill. Like, so <laughs> the fact that we're all like collectively on the same page about this one, I think really speaks to just how over the West on Cell Jr. era. Like, yeah, literally, it also means this. Wizards podcasters, bloggers, whatever. We get lectured once in a while. Look, we just talk. Weird fans just talking out loud, you know, like, you know, just kind of just expressing our thoughts. But then, you know, some people always jump in and be like, oh, you guys don't know shit. You guys just talk. And we don't, like, largely we don't. But once in a while we do hit, you know? And kind of we've been saying for a while that Wes is not it. The front office determined the same thing. So, Mm -hmm. hey, maybe pump your brakes and, you know, and actually listen once in a while. You know, yeah. don't just assume that everything we're saying is some shit because clearly smarter people who are more well paid than us are agreeing with some of the things that we've been saying all along. <laughs> it, yeah, the, the certain small section of people that are dismissive, um, even including sometimes the broadcast team, throwing a little shade here, uh, <laughs> seemingly came around to this decision as well. So yeah. um, just just saying. Uh Good question here from Ben in the chat. Um, have we noticed this team detaching from the coaching staff? Went to games this past weekend, and most of the team didn't look at the clipboard once during timeouts. Uh, ben, I, I think, I don't know, like, th- that's exactly where I was going with, like, that Denny comment, too. Like, he he literally yelled in Wes's face and then just kind of chilled the whole rest of the game, and that was Wes's first year, if I remember correctly. Maybe it was last year. Uh, they all kind of run together. Mm-hmm. And then you, you saw the pool clip earlier in the year, like, of him just like you staring have a, blankly. You have the Kuzma and, example from Saturday night against the Spurs. Yeah, just like glazed well, over. Was telling him to go. Off. Yeah. Well, no, Wes was telling him to go, oh, and you could yeah. see Wes motioning at half court like go because he wanted the quick two because they still had a timeout. They wanted to play the quick two foul game, yep. and Kuzma launches the three. That, that was the so, Spurs game, right? Uh, at the Spurs game, right. It's the one game so far this season I have not gone back to watch because I, I just don't want to. And I was busy getting my ass kicked in a tennis tournament this weekend. So it was all the losing I could handle for <laughs> for one weekend. So I actually missed that one. It was actually pretty fun. Yeah, but there was like so. And then Wes, I think after the game, had even said that it was communicated, go play play for the quick two because they still had a timeout. Uh-huh. Um, and then what Kuzma did was that ended up settling for a very long three, um, which didn't go in. And then we lost to the Spurs. So it's one of those where – And you can see on the replay visibly, Wes is motioning, go, go, go. And Kuz calls for the pick screen and then just launches the ball. So like you said, did Kuz really not hear him or are they just not on the same page? Yeah, exactly. Uh, That that, that kind of disconnect just seemingly happened all too frequently. And yeah, it just can't happen. Like it can happen once, you know, but it it can't be like a regular occurrence with an NBA team. You just don't see that with other teams, like as frequently as it seemingly happened here. And there's all the other bullshit and chemistry stuff. And yeah, it it just, it was just clearly time. Uh, Papa Wands, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Was asked who was pro West. What are they talking about? Uh, There were just a few propagandists out there in the ether that were always, the organization is right. Ted is right. We had to keep Wes. Wes is a great man. I, apologies, whoever else set it up earlier in the chat. If the first thing people talk about with you is how nice a person you are, you're, you're probably not that good at your job. So, uh, you know, I think that was a yeah. a very and look, um, apt and look I understand the well. notion that people are like West wasn't dreads for you know, dreads for nothing. By the way, so I, I, I understand the notion when people say, "Look, it's talent," because it is talent, but yeah. they like they just aren't even. There's they're not playing together. They're not like, there's just no growth that you're seeing. So yeah, that is an issue. And that goes, goes back to us. And even when look, <laughs> Kevin, Kev, our friend, Kevin Broom, who is probably the most logical out of all of us out here, kind of, you know, in stat base and what have you, and kind of analyzing everything from a much higher level than I'm capable of, you know, Same. he, at the beginning of the season, he's always like, Oh, Wes runs some very nice sets. But by the, you know, a few weeks ago when I joined him on a podcast, um, he was like, what the fuck are they doing with the yeah, law? Just- and to get Kevin to react like that, who is, you know, like much more reasonable in his takes, I'm like, okay, well, Wes is clearly doing something because something that's not right because Kevin never reacts like that. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> we've now hit DEFCON 5 at this point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. I think we've beaten this one up pretty good here. Oz, thanks for doing it. I didn't mean to keep you even this long on, on a work day. I've got to go put an hour for an hour of leave into my uh, time card now just to, to account for this. But I uh, appreciate you doing it. appreciate everybody following along in the chat just excited for where we go from here. I'm not excited anytime anyone loses their job. So this time I don't feel bad being excited because 
let's pretend he got promoted because he was so such a nice guy. Um, that's how I'm going to choose to look at it. Uh, yeah, we'll just see what Brian Keefe does, and, and hopefully we just see some signs of life. Like, I, I just want the little heartbeat thing to just start pinging a little bit more strongly yeah, every once in a while. Just an yeah. occasional ping, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, again, hit that little like button for us, guys. Subscribing is also cool. We always appreciate that kind of stuff. Rate, review, subscribe on whatever podcast app you want. Never would say no to an iTunes review if you're so inclined. We're presented by betonline.ag. Oz, any final thoughts, shots, any of that stuff before we totally wrap um, this up? I know when I was on this pod one time, someone said that I look like Wes Onsell Jr. And I have remembered that, and I've <laughs> been angry about that since. <laughs> But my doppelganger is no longer the head coach of the Wizards. and You outlasted him, man. There you go. I outlasted him, you know. <laughs> you are the longest tenured handsome man associated with the Wizards here. So. And I have a front, of, front office position. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. So I will take his contract if anyone's willing to offer that kind of money. I think I could lead to this record as well if, um, <laughs> if that's what we're doing. It is really funny, though, that sometimes, like, people say some like wild shit in the chat here and it'll be like the one like tiniest little comment. That is the one that will just fucking stick with me for like six weeks. I'm, I'm basically <laughs> like asking people to troll or needle me now because that's what will happen as a result of this. But there are very uh, few ones, like one of the, the like kind of wild Denny stands also tweeted mm -hmm. once that I hated America too, which I don't even know what that means, but that one, <laughs> That one kept me up at night. I was like, shit. Uh, um, Look, I was at the game yesterday, and yep. when I looked over at West, the only thing I could see, I was like, damn, this is, his beard does look like mine. I really got to, like, color this thing. It's, it's a stylish yeah, look, man. I'm telling you, you're, you're killing it. Uh, Joseph Blair's got similar look going. His beard's a little little longer, you know. But I'm getting just for men. Dying this thing black. <laughs> we, cannot, yeah, we can have no more West on Salt Association. We got to go for the Brian Keith look. I, I, I don't know. I feel like I'll get that comp next. We're just like the unassuming middle-aged white guy look, you know? That's, that's, <laughs> I couldn't pick him out of a crowd, but he's that RNBA head coach, so we'll see how it goes. All right, everybody. That's Believe in Wizards. Oz, appreciate you, man. Uh, thanks yeah. for everybody for tuning in. Uh, Jahadi and I will be back tomorrow, so if you're not sick of us by then, you can come back in, and we're going to talk about, like, what he wants to see um, in terms of personality, temperament, style, coaching wise. And then we just got some other little fun things for Remember you. Matt's, about tease. Matt's tease about who the coach would have been. That's coming, baby. I'm telling you. And, and it's going to make people hate me, but also not like, yeah, I could see that. So we'll see how it goes. All right, everybody presented by betonline.ag. We'll catch you all next time.